I'm in South Dakota, one of the most sparsely populated states in America. I am on my way to go and spend the weekends with a family of polygamists. So they are fundamentalists Mormons. Jeff the father wanted to expand their family. There are two wives currently on the scene. So yeah, lots to talk about. Polygamy is illegal in most countries in the world, including America. But Jeff Aldridge refused to let the law stop him having multiple wives. And in 2008, then aged 45, he tied the knot in a spiritual service with 22-year-old Vanessa, and then a year later, with 21-year-old Sharice. I always try and go into these situations with an open mind, but I do think it can kind of feed into the narrative that women are there to kind of serve men. I don't understand why a man needs more than one partner. Jeff and his wives raised a family in the predominantly Mormon state of Utah. But back then, Utah banned people living with multiple spouses, legal wedding or not. And to avoid prosecution, the family moved to this remote, wild west corner of America. It would be really interesting to hear from Jeff, like how much of this is because he feels it's necessary because of his religious beliefs and how much of it is actually just a guy kind of having his cake and eating it. I need to not get the wives muddled up. Look at this view. This is stunning. Oh my God. Super isolated though. Oh my god, they're the kids. Hi. Okay, gang. Hello. How Hi. are you, Stacey? Hi, how are you? Good. It's good to meet nice you. Nice to meet you. You survived nice. our driveway? I did, I know. I'm in one piece, Jeff. I'm Jeff. Lovely to meet you. Hello. Vanessa. Nice to meet you, good Vanessa. To meet you. Likewise. Hi. I'm Sharice. Nice to meet Welcome. you, Welcome. Thank you. Hello, baby. This is Chloe. Want to say hello? Want to shake your hand? Two-year-old Chloe is the youngest of the family's eight kids. Fourteen-year-old Dane, the eldest. Nice to meet you. Right, watch this. Here we go. <laughs> Jeff, Vanessa, Sebastian, Dane, Daniel, Zara, Dalina, <laughs> Misty, Chloe, Serenity. Serenity. Yes. Charisse. Very yeah. good. I'm impressed. There we go. There we go. <laughs> what a gang. You took a course. Uh, listen, thanks for having me. Wow. I'm so excited. Oh, come take a tour. Great. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> You're going to show me. The tour right there. Are you in charge? I've got so many questions for this family. The polygamous lifestyle they choose to live on their 20 acre farm was officially rejected by the mainstream Mormon church over a hundred years ago. So this is the living room, just, you know, pretty Cute. typical living room. Yep. Here is our kitchen. Look at this. Yeah. yeah, a lot of this is from our garden. Wow. Yeah. Um, and then we are so lucky. There's one bathroom for all of us to share. So. <laughs> one bathroom, 11 people. 11 people. There you go. It gets interesting, especially <laughs> as they grow up. This could be a regular family home. <laughs> I can't pull up. How about you kids stay downstairs and we'll be right back. We'll be right back. But what I'm dying to know is who sleeps where. So up here is where me and my children sleep. Okay, so this is your domain. Yes. So your kids all sleep here. Yep. And my room is in here. You sleep here the entire time. Yes. And then does Jeff spend some nights here, some nights? Yes, currently we're, we're alternating every other night. He'll spend a night with me, then I'll go over to Vanessa's room because I'm married to Jeff. And then Vanessa's married to Jeff. It's two different marriages in one family. How do you decide who does what in, in terms of chores? 
so I'm primarily in charge of meal planning, cooking, and taking care of inside of the house. Sharice kind of focuses outside the house. So it's pretty non-stop. It is. I, I know Sharice and I have kind of talked about it. We're like, okay, we're at like maximum capacity right now. So. And Jeff, where, where do you come in? I just kind of sit around and watch TV. No, that's not true. <laughs> what do you do? What are your chores? Uh, I go to work every day. I, I'm a logger. I chop down trees and the good ones I bring home and make into furniture. Really? Yeah. The income from Jeff's logging business is used to buy essentials for their modest Mormon lifestyle. Right, where are we going? We're going up this way. Thank you. Oh, hey. And it looks like some of Jeff's spare wood has been crafted into my weekend digs. Look at this. Isn't it cool? Really cool. After you. Charisse, this is so chic. We do have a sleeping bag up there if it gets too cold. There's also a little buddy heater we can bring in to heat the space. Thank you. And if I need a wee in the middle of the night, yes. do I just come to the family home? Yes, absolutely. We'll leave a door unlocked. I wish we had a setup out here. I could little... just go for a wee by the tree. That's always an option. Yeah. What do you think? I am seriously impressed. Yeah. And look at this view. Okay. I mean, I'm sure it's pretty safe. Yeah, there's no electricity, so it's going to be pretty pitch black. There's just so much to unpick, do you know what I mean? Like, even then, Vanessa and Jeff were like linking arms and being like super tactile. And it's just so jarring because I'm like, oh, what about Charisse? But it just feels so, so foreign to me. This afternoon, the family have invited me to join them in prayer. All right, here's one pretty flower. Okay. Are you okay? When Jeff married two women, he defied the mainstream Mormon church's strict multiple wives ban. Now estranged from the church, the family still consider themselves Mormon, but can only practice their religion at home. Give, oh, give away. Wonderful. We, we worship as a family under the circumstances because we really don't have a group to worship in. But we're glad that you're here and glad that all the kids are here happy. Right, Chloe? <laughs> Does Mama want to help you do an article of faith? Can you say a uh, third article of faith? <laughs> we believe. O oh God, the Eternal Father, we ask Thee in the name of Thy Son, Jesus Christ, to bless and sanctify this bread to the souls of all those who partake of it, and keep His commandments, which He hath given them, that they may always have His Spirit to be with them. Amen. 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 Thank you. You guys can go and hang out for a little bit. We're probably going to stay and talk to Stacy. Guys, thank you so much for letting me sit in on that service. It was short, sweet, concise. It's nice when you've got little ones. Maybe that's why God said to have a bunch of children in the first place. <laughs> <laughs> so you keep your services short and everybody enjoys them and they come back for more. <laughs> and just on a very sort of honest level, how does it feel to be excommunicated? On one hand, it's um, very, very liberating because now I can express and worship God in the way that I see fit. But I miss congregation. You ladies miss that too, right? Oh, I miss it a lot, yeah. But we should do the best we can. Yeah. You've essentially been kicked out of, of the church. Do you ever feel shame? I did not feel shame because I, I believed that what I was doing was correct. And I knew that it was what I wanted. I knew that it's what I believed God wanted me to do. Really? You, yes. You sort of truly believe that? Oh, absolutely. I think some people will think it's really quite commendable that you are, you know, living your life on your terms. I think other people will think, is he using religion to justify, to justify having as many wives as he wants? Sure. I think you probably hit it right on the head, you know, and 
and you can't stop those perceptions. Mm. I feel like many Mormons will be outraged at Jeff's behaviour. You would come in here and assume that Jeff is in charge, what Jeff says goes, but Sharice isn't, you know, a subservient woman, and neither is Vanessa. There's still a lot for me to try to understand. All right, um, is there a child that would like to say the prayer? It's my first evening in South Dakota with polygamist Mormon Jeff and his two wives, Sharice and Vanessa. Father in heaven, please bless us strength and that this room will nourish our strength in our bodies. And in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Amen, amen to that. And I'm trying to get my head around this unfamiliar lifestyle that the law and Mormon church condemns. And whose bed are you in tonight, Jeff? I can't remember. <laughs> I believe it would be mine. Ooh. Kids know. <laughs> it's a terrible thing if I forget that. Yeah. We'll, we'll remind you. I know. We'll, we'll spend a few minutes in my room tonight saying goodnight. Mm -hmm. okay. And then he'll go to Vanessa's room. Oh. So typically that's what happens. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In this house, the kids are used to their dad alternating which wife he sleeps with. I've got some questions reserved just for the grown-ups. I'm trying to imagine my boyfriend sat on a sofa with another woman stroking her leg. I'd be a bit like, Aah! At this point, it barely registers. I think when I first got married, it was different because it's just kind of like, you know, maybe feelings of jealousy or just feelings of just wondering what that meant. Yeah, there were days that you know, him being physical with Vanessa bothered me. And so I won't say jealousy is never a problem anymore, but when it does come up, I've recognized that I just need to take a step back. I really appreciate your honesty because the, the rehearsed answer is we never have problems right. with jealousy. I don't Everything believe that when anybody fine. says it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, those feelings of jealousy are extremely powerful. Like going to the movies and leaning closer to one, and this one will be in tears for two or three days. You love her more than me, oh my gosh. I feel the only way is to be exactly equal. Never do anything here that I don't do here. Sharice knows that tomorrow or the next night I'll be sitting on the couch with my hand on Vanessa's knee. Do you sometimes prefer one person over the other? Um, Picture it. Like, oh, she's going to answer for me. Unless she, you'd like to. <laughs> you looked like you were, oh, she's you looked my like you were favorite. struggling. <laughs> no, there are times where... If I was, like, really in a bad mood... Yeah, if she'd been really pissy be all like, day... He'd be like, Sharice, we're yeah. going. We're going. <laughs> but I have to be careful. You're hyper-aware when you're around two wives. It, it's a difficult thing for the ladies, but it's hugely difficult for the man. It's funny when he sort of alludes to the idea that the hardship falls on his shoulders when in actual fact I think the women have had to put in a lot of the work and they have to try and get a grip on their jealousy. Well, let's go say goodnight, huh? Thank you for today, guys. Yes, we will see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow, to tomorrow bright and early. Yep. All right. Once Jeff said goodnight to Sharice, he'll head to bed with Vanessa. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, you're welcome. So yeah. they will just take how long? If they're like, want to talk about something really serious, maybe that's happened or whatever, it could be up to an hour. But typically it's about 10 to 15 minutes. Yeah. That was really quick because she's my favorite. <laughs> just kidding. With Sharice in one room. You want to finish watching the movie? I think that's a good idea. And her husband about to sleep with his other wife. Time for me to make a quick exit. Thank you. Right, sleep well. You too. Thank you very much. Good Thank bye. you, everyone. You're not going to have to worry, but there are, you know, bears and cougars and 
Oh, they're Mostly, bears out there. It's not a likely scenario. Yay. Don't, and if don't the door's bolted, you'll be why just fine. Why are you scaring her at this oh. point in the night? No, I'm going to be fine. <laughs> right, see you tomorrow. All right. <laughs> I don't know where the hell I'm going, by the way. Because honest to God, it's pitch black. Look. How am I supposed to see anything? How am I supposed to fight off the bears? It's been a puzzling first day. Like the obvious beneficiary is Jeff. But they've been in this marriage for 14, 15 years. The sort of obvious question is what is in it for the women? How was last night? Last night was okay. It's a bit cold. It's so quiet. No bears will be pleased to hear. <laughs> Waking up to my first morning on the family's 20 acre homestead. Hi, good morning. Good morning. I'm keen to get Jeff's wives' take on why they chose to be part of a polygamous family. Have you ever milked a goat, Stacey? I think I've milked a cow. Okay. Similar. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Let me... Would you like to come out with me then? Relax. She can she can feel it if you're nervous. Yeah, I need so to just vibe. You have to commit. Okay, I'm going. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm, I'm so sorry. I don't know why. I'm like not. Sorry. Okay. Come on, baby. Uh, well, there we go. Charisse was brought up in a polygamous Mormon family, and I'm wondering how big a part that played in her decision to marry Jeff. There we go. There Is we that go. Enough? It's a start. When you were growing up, your father had multiple wives. Yeah, he had two wives. I absolutely love both my moms, and you know, my my grandfather spent time in jail because he was a polygamist, and I was always afraid growing up that my, they would come take my dad away that we would get turned over to the state because I had two moms. If people don't see a healthy version of this lifestyle, then they're always going to assume the worst because nobody ever reads about this type of stuff unless they come across something awful and it hits the newspapers and people would only read about the bad guys, so to speak. This can be a very stabilizing, healthy environment. Charisse, when she talks about her faith, she talks so, like, she's full of passion. This has always been part of her culture. I can't help wondering how this family's unique setup is viewed outside their cosy bubble. Let's go shopping! Let's go! And I'm hoping a rare trip away from home will reveal more about how they're seen by the local community. You know, this is a country western fishing, hunting, gun store. So, you know, it, it pleases the male heart. <laughs> yeah. We might get some good looks while we're there. <laughs> Jeff is keen for me to check out some suitable farm footwear. Those are cute. Also functional. Well, let me see. <laughs> I don't know if they are. Huh? Oh, really? Or certified work boots. How's it going, sir? Hi, how are you? What's your name? My name's Tanner. Nice to meet you, I'm Stacy. Um, do you know Jeff and Charisse? I've helped them with a few things in the store before. <laughs> and do you know that Jeff has more than one wife? Say, I did not. You did not know. Surprise! He probably thought this was my daughter. Probably, huh? <laughs> did you? I did. <laughs> Jeff has two wives. Yep. What do you make of polygamy? You know, that's a, that works for some people. I think it's like a lot of things in life. If you can make it work and it makes you happy, you know, go for it. Mm -hmm. Would it work for you? Uh, I've had relationships in the past where it didn't quite work out. Oh, so you have experience. Yep. About 13 years ago with my ex-fiance, uh, I was one of two partners for her. Oh, so there was one woman, two men? Yep. Oh, okay. Did you ever feel jealous? 
at the beginning because it feels weird and new, mm -hmm. especially when you're not comfortable in it. <laughs> I would get jealous. <laughs> so you're saying that, that situation wouldn't work for you, two, two men, one woman? No. <laughs> not happening? Not happening. There will be people screaming at the television. There will. You are so hypocritical. It's okay for you to have two women but you wouldn't be down with it I being didn't, flipped on the I didn't head. say <clears throat> that I wouldn't support or even allow other people to choose that lifestyle. Very important. I just couldn't live it myself. I think I would struggle mm -hmm. having that, two men. That doesn't make sense to me. Um, I'm about to offend every feminist everywhere. Okay. I like alpha males. So you enjoy Jeff being the dominant figure? Yes, and if there were two men like that, they would they would and clash. You know that. Yep. It wouldn't be. That's what happened, isn't it? Yep. Yeah, it wouldn't be the the peace that I enjoy. <clears throat> There's this stigma around polygamy that these young girls are forced to marry older men, and it was my choice. Nobody, nobody arranged this. This was this was us. We chose each other. We were compatible and we loved each other. I'll take these. I reckon. How do you feel wearing those boots? feel like a strong, fierce cowgirl. <laughs> it was worthwhile me hanging out with Sharice and Jeff because I just get the impression that they are so in sync. I don't think she's kind of blindly following Jeff in any way. I think this is how she wants to live. Back at the ranch. So here's the deal. I have two trees yep. that I think we need to remove. Okay. Um, okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> My spanking new cowboy boots are about to be put to work. I have you look to... pretty darn fashionable for great. a woodsy woman. <laughs> so hold it more in the middle there. There you go. You feel the power? Oh. Jeff's impressed. Timber! <laughs> Woohoo! You did good. Wow. But there's something still confusing me about this family's Mormon faith. Back in the day, that religion said, you're fine to have multiple wives. Right. Then that religion changed its mind. And so you're on board with what they were referencing in right. 1890. Why has it been condemned? Why have so many other people got it wrong and you've got it right? I believe that God cherishes the agency and the freedom that he's given to his children. Mm. But he also allows for things to be experienced. God says, if you choose, you may do this. And I got to the point where I believed that to follow the direction of what God said originally was worth the risk of disobeying what the leaders of the church say now. Two and a Do you want more? Um, I love my family. And yes, I'm open. I'm open to a third wife. Really? Absolutely. Dear Father in heaven, we're so very thankful for the opportunity to be gathered together as a family. My weekends with Mormon polygamist Jeff and his two wives has just got even more interesting. <clears throat> that we could have a home to be in, a place to be safe, and amen. Amen. Jeff wants to add a third wife to his family of 11. And I'm not sure what to make of this revelation. Hold this up. So, like, here are folks who have messaged me in the last two or three days. I haven't answered these. There's people... so many people sliding into <laughs> your DMs, Jeff. But she looks great. And that's when you start to wonder, is when they look great. Because you wonder what's, <laughs> you, you wonder, what are they, who is this, right? It could be anybody carrying a catfish. Jeff's using modern technology, a plural partner's dating site, to help him with this centuries old search for a third wife. Can you imagine me trying to go on a regular dating site and then how do I say, oh, by the way, I have two wives. Nah, nah, it's not gonna work. I'm not gonna deceive anybody into thinking something's different than it is. I mean, does it feel slightly peculiar that you're speaking to other women in one of your wife's bedrooms? Like right now? 
Yeah. Well, not. <laughs> well, not me. Well, here we are. We are not luckily, thinking that we're going to get married. Luckily, going they forward. trust me. No, this is the only quiet spot in the house. Okay. It's it's quiet. There's a couch. No, the lights went off. We lost our power. Could be you guys are stuck here for years. Oh, fun. Who's going to marry who? <laughs> I retreat to my tree house before I get sucked into the polygamous lifestyle. Just so bonkers. Jeff. He is charismatic. I think he likes to be in charge. But I think it's fair to say, like, how sustainable is this? Because if a third wife does come along, where does that leave Vanessa and Charisse? Thankfully, I'm not left in the dark for long. All right, can brush your teeth, girls. Get ready for bed. Yeah. <laughs> and I head back indoors to Vanessa's room. Hey, hey Susie. Vanessa, can I come in? Absolutely. Do you mind? Yeah, have a seat. Get comfy. It's so quiet up here. Yeah. Isn't it? Yeah, this is my, this is my place of recovery and this solitude. is my place of recovery yes. <laughs> <laughs> Vanessa married Jeff a year before he wed Charisse and I'm keen to hear her take on this unique family setup why were you up for marrying someone who was into polygamy both of my parents came from fundamentalist families so I was very familiar with it it was always one of those things that I just thought I think that's something that's good after a lot of thought and prayer, I just really came to the conclusion, I'm like, you know what, I would. I really would. And then shortly thereafter, I got introduced to Jeff and, you know, the rest is history. If somebody else is introduced, mm -hmm. how do you really feel about that? I am very open to it. I, I enjoy my female friendships and having that female presence in the home is not intimidating for me anymore. Would it always have to be a younger woman with no kids. You know, the age gap, it's a real thing. You know, when I married Jeff, I was a virgin. When Charisse married Jeff, she was a virgin. You know, he and I have 22 years between us, but there, there gets a point where it's too much. Yeah, and what kind of attributes yeah. would she have to have? I think I would honestly look for somebody who shares a foundational belief in Christianity for one, somebody who wants to be a part of the family and somebody who is honest. Also, you know, you're not just sharing a husband, she's going to be around your kids. Mm -hmm. She's massive. Yeah. Be back in a minute, hon. All right. Boop, boop. It seems Vanessa and Charisse both love their husbands. You got time for a quick goodnight? Sure. Sweet. Yeah. Love you and are genuinely happy to share him in the morning <laughs> with one or more wives. Sebastian, that is so kind. You sweetheart. Thank you. Wow. Did you catch that? She just called your mom. Oh, am I? <laughs> my, my mom. Oh, give me five. Who is that? My mom. mom. <laughs> ever since, oh, ever since she was little, all women have been mom, all men have been dad. That's, that's her world. There so. you go. <laughs> my name is Who to call mom may soon become even more confusing. Today, Jeff has a Zoom call with a lady he's been chatting to online. I know a lady in Luton. What? Yeah. My hometown. That's kind of fun, huh? You're speaking to a lady? Yeah. In England? Yes. She's from Luton? Um, she's from that area, yes. Are you serious? I'm absolutely serious. Is the idea that she might become wife number three? Well, I don't know if I'd go that <laughs> far, and that might really spook her, you know, because we're just friends here. Right. Her name is Marie. Marie. Mm -hmm. Hello, Marie. Hello. Hi. How are you? I'm good. Are you all right? I am. Yeah, I am. 
Maria's happy for us to film the chat, but has asked that we don't show her face. Where are you from? I'm from Luton, Stopsley. I went to school. I went to Stopsley High School. I went to Stopsley High School and <laughs> moved to Ashcroft. I know Ashcroft really. <laughs> This is so bonkers. She's geeking out here. I, I am geeking out. Yeah. Like, what? Mm-hmm. <laughs> There's not many polygamists over here, though, so you do need to travel over there. But, yeah. <laughs> oh, mm-hmm. I'm delighted to meet you. Yeah. What is it about polygamy that interests you? Well, I do believe in God, and I do believe in the Mormon church and stuff. Polygamy for me is not, it's not religion. It's what's happened in my past. So I don't have family and I've got three children. Mm -hmm. Their dad is not involved. Okay. So I've raised my kids on my own. And what really pulls me is the sister wives. It's that friendship. And if I, if something was to happen to me and I'm gone, I know there's at least one or two other women that are going to raise my kids. Yeah. And my kids are going to be loved. Yeah, I can understand how you've come to that conclusion. Because in essence, you're saying you're just prioritising your kids. You want to make sure that they're looked after no matter what but it's not just about my kids it's i've had times in my darkest times where life's too hard and i've sat there and i thought i'm trapped if i had sister wives Mm. they're who i'm going to turn to not just my husband and i know that they have my back 100 percent, and i'm never alone that's the pull right you and jeff have a really lovely friendship do you see this going anywhere we do have a connection but obviously i need to go and visit and see if um that is there or if it is just a friendship right listen thank you so much for letting me sit in on this i really do appreciate it all right darling thanks so much marie all right i will speak to you later all right thank you we'll see you bye bye okay there we go I feel like she wanted to talk to me because she feels there are misconceptions surrounding your setup. To express something that is so different. Not the status quo, yeah. Yes, um, it takes great courage. Talk about a a strong woman. Do you fancy Marie? Um, I do, but I need to keep it at the level of friends until she comes to visit, and so who knows? Watch this space. There could be a Lutonian in hot springs. Mm -hmm. It is a possibility. All right, if you guys can see anything that needs to be picked that's ready, then go ahead and pick it. Jeff's desire for a third wife has left me wondering what impact the parents' polygamous lifestyle has on the next generation. You guys are going to learn about the Bill of Rights, the Constitution. So who did it say gave us our rights? God. God, yes. Endowed by our Creator, given to us by God. Like many Mormons, the Aldridges have chosen to homeschool their eight kids. Do you guys think that liberty is important to God? It's very important to God. And want to raise them to have a good understanding of their modest, self-sufficient lifestyle. Daniel? Did you feed the big goats? Yeah. Thank you. No, we fed there. Did the baby goats need to be fed? Oh, look at the piglet. There's a pile of them. To live self-sufficiently, the family rear and slaughter farm animals for food. This big guy right here? Yeah. That's my boar. His name's Kevin Bacon. (laughs) And so what, these are are his ladies? Yep. He's a polygamist. He's a polygamist. A yep. polygamist pig. A, a polygamist pig. Pigoligamist. So he's got um, three ladies. Yes. You've only got two, Jeff. I'm falling you're, behind. You're falling behind. <laughs> so it sounds like it's important to you, Jeff, that you teach your kids, your family, to try and live off the land. It's very important. Very fast. Okay. Dane has been butchering most of our animals for the last couple of years. Yeah. yeah. Probably about, I think, four years now. And you're how old? Start. Remind me. Fourteen. So you when you were, like, ten? About, yeah. Dane and I actually are going to butcher this pig. Okay. He's perfectly capable of doing all these things on his own. Do you think he's ready right there? I just slid it there. That's why I wanted the little fire. 
it's clear Dane is already following in his father's Mormon footsteps. But I wonder how he feels about one day creating his own polygamous family. Do you mind if I have a quick chat with you? Sure. What's your experience been growing up in this kind of environment? Uh, I feel more mature than other kids. Yeah, I would say you're quite mature, Dane. Yeah. And do you mind me asking, and you don't have to answer, have you got a girlfriend? No, no. my parents don't really want me dating until 16, but kind of sucks. <laughs> And do you imagine that you will live a life similar to your dad's? One partner or multiple partners? Well, I'm sure it would start with one. Yeah. And then I'd decide from there. I'm leaning toward multiple, but I'll have to decide after, after one if I'm ready for multiple. <laughs> Little Dane's great. See, I've never heard a 14-year-old say that they're quite up for multiple wives before. As tonight's my last night, the Aldridges have invited me to a farewell barbie and they've arranged a South Dakota mode of transport to get there. Stacy Dooley, I would like you to meet Dooley the horse. I am not okay that this horse is called Dooley. <laughs> Different spelling, but I'll bet it means the same thing. Yeah. Grab on the saddle, heart leg over. <laughs> you don't have any heels, so don't let your feet slip through. Honey. Okay. Dooley on the dooley. Ciao for now, Jeff. Wow, there she goes. Dooley on a dooley. This is so fun. Oh my God, this is so fun. At times like this, the family's life seems idyllic. But with Jeff hoping to invite a third wife into his family, I wonder if the harmony could soon be broken. Isn't that view amazing? I mean, it's really, really spectacular. So I sat in with Jeff when he was having a conversation with Marie. How much do you know about her? I know a little bit about her, not a lot. I know if things got more serious between her and Jeff that she'd come out and visit. And at that point in time, I guess I'd make a, a more of an effort. I feel like you would have to like her, no? Because she'd be coming into your family. It, I mean, it'd be great if we liked her. <laughs> And it wouldn't work if she didn't if we didn't like her. It no, just wouldn't. No, it wouldn't. So. It definitely wouldn't work in this setting with us all living in the same home. And who has the final say? Say, you know, Jeff's super keen, you two aren't as sold. Is it ultimately up to Jeff? Ultimately it is, because at the end of the day, it's his marriage with her and her marriage with him. But it affects you. It affects us deeply. And so we are always trying to be on the same page. Yeah. And, you know, if Sharice or I was really against it, that would hold a lot of weight. Ultimately, at the end of the day, it's Jeff's decision. I'm surprised a choice that could rock this family's stability is left solely to the man of the house. I, I think it should be a, a joint decision because it's the women that have to really shift things and it's the women that have to keep their jealousy in check. It's just such a big ask. It's such a big ask. <sighs> Chloe, can you come with me? <laughs> this place is really beautiful. Oh, it's just gorgeous. Really beautiful. Wow. We do, <laughs> Misty, we did her baptism right here. Did you, did you get baptized here? Uh -huh. And what does it mean to be baptized? It means that you can like believe in Christ and a lot of stuff that is hard to explain. Yeah. <laughs> Who baptizes the kids? I do. Are you, you're allowed to, you're allowed to um, baptize them? The church would say no. I received the priesthood in the church before they excommunicated me and they would say that by being excommunicated that that's gone. But um, I don't believe that it is. We've had the Spirit of God in our home and uh, that's my duty and my right as a father. And so I baptize them. And all your kids seem to me fairly religious. They all believe in I think God. so. It's 
who their parents are. They don't know any other life. I wouldn't be surprised if most of Jeff's kids consider adopting the same polygamous Mormon life as their parents. Watch your marshmallow, honey. What do you make of your family setup? Well, I like it. I didn't really think about it much when I was young. It just felt normal to me. I wondered why everyone else only had one mom. It's funny. I, I like how I live. It's fun. I've got lots of siblings, lots of parents to go to, all those kind of things I'd need. More people to take care of me. And more people to get in trouble by, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. Would you mind another Yeah, mom? I'd be fine with that. Yeah. I'd want to meet them first, I guess. Yeah, you'd want to like give them the once over. Yeah. I love you, Daddy. I love you too. Oh. What is clear is that this is a loving, tight-knit family. Do you know, I will miss my trusty tree house. It's my final morning in South Dakota. It's definitely a patriarchal setup. Jeff is definitely in charge. But the women aren't oppressed, like the women want to be here. Jeff has said himself, you know, lots of Mormons will be so opposed to how he is conducting himself. He would say, I'm following the origins. They went off the initial script. Okay. The truth is, the only person that knows what makes Jeff tick is Jeff. You know, I could spend weeks here and none of us will ever really know whether he has got two wives and hopes to have more because he truly in his heart of heart believes that that is what God wants him to do. Chloe, I'm leaving, baby. I'll see you later. Or he just likes women and this is quite a, a useful reason. Goodbye, young lady. You've been a good sport. Mm -hmm. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Really. But actually, it does feel like a happy home. I can't imagine this would ever work for me. But so what? Well, we will try and kind of dissect things because it doesn't feel familiar. That doesn't mean that it can't work. Right, that's me. Bye, bye, bye. 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 bye babe. See ya. Bye. 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 Bye.